So the number one problem fit pros have is they don't have a high converting offer. And that's why in this training session right now, we're gonna go through how you can set up your high ticket sales funnel, how you actually know how to sell high ticket coaching programs. And we're gonna call high ticket coaching programs $1,800 and up. And I wanna show you something super fancy because technology is gonna be on our side as we go through this process. But the reason why we wanna say $1,800 and up is really so you can actually charge a decent amount into coaching programs. And this goes into something that we have to understand first. What is a client worth to you? And this is how it's going to work because a lot of this training is going behind the scenes. And in a second after we go through what a client is worth for you, Josh is going to share what his journey has been building online fitness programs and really why he's here today going through this. But really quickly, what's a client worth to you? So in general, what we're going to be looking at is we're going to be saying that you're going to charge $300 per month or more, okay? So we're starting with the lowest numbers and this can always be more. But let's just say, for example, that you're charging $300 per month for uh, coaching programs. Now we say on average, a client is going to stay with you for about six months. Now a client, you will typically stay for much, much longer. Uh, and a client could maybe stay only for a 12 week win, but we say on average, and this is on the low side, it will be uh, six months a client comes on with you. So let's just say average six months with you. Now, really simple math, if you have $300 a month for six months, that means your client is worth $1,800 to you, okay? Now the goal is that we are going to help you create a system for being able to sign on new clients each and every week. And really the target is, is this is what Josh and I say to so many cartel members coming on board, is that the goal really is, if we can get five clients a week, that equals $36,000 of sales every single week. So the question is, would you like us to be able to show you how to set up the system and so you can confidently sign on to potentially be making $36,000 per week with your coaching programs? What do you think about that, Josh? Yeah, I don't think anyone's life will get worse by selling 36K worth of coaching. <laughs> okay, this is amazing. Now, before we actually dive into it, because there's going to be uh, like really three major things that we're going to show you in this coaching session. Uh, one is actually going to really be the selling fulcrum. This is something for me, I'm not the smartest dude in the world, so I need things to be made really simple for me to be able to get it. And when a mentor showed me this selling fulcrum concept that I'm going to show you, Honestly, I think a light bulb actually went off above my head and I really got it and it was dramatic with the difference it made me to be able to sell and be able to help fit pros be able to sell therefore after that as well. And Josh is gonna go into three really key things. One, what do you do before you actually go into a sales conversation? Two, how do you value stack to make sure you have the highest converting offer? And three, how do you handle objections? And I know so many fit pros are suck or just aren't confident when it comes to handling objections. And we're gonna show you exactly how to pierce straight through those as well. But Josh, really quickly, dude, in a nutshell, um, I would love for you to share your story with how you actually got into online fitness coaching. Uh, share how many people you've actually coached with online fitness as well, and what your journey is for you being here today. Yeah, absolutely, bro. I'm so excited to dive into this because this has been my life over the last five or six years trying to put all this stuff together, banging my head against the wall to figure what works and what doesn't. Um, I was actually a physical education school teacher. So I was not a trained business person, no real entrepreneurship experience. I was I loved those little boys and girls and was teaching them how to play sports every day. So it was fun. Didn't love the income. I uh, definitely didn't love the lifestyle as well. I learned very quickly I'm more of an entrepreneur than employee. Um, so I was like, I've got to be able to take my love for people and the human body and the mind and all that good stuff that I'm sure a lot of you watching this are passionate about as well. And why you are either in coaching or want to get into coaching. I picked the more entrepreneurial path, the PT route. Start him. Um, very much so like a lot of you, if you're training face to face, if gyms are open in your area, had no idea how to market and sell what I do. If you think about a lot of the certifications out there and a lot of like a bachelor's degree or master's degree in university around kinesiology, exercise, science, physical education, all that good stuff, 
No one talks about how to market and sell yourself. It's all of the technical stuff about the human body, which you got to know. But really, how do you communicate? How do you build an offer? How do you sell yourself? How do you make money? No one was talking about it. So I was really disappointed that when I got into the real world of the entrepreneurship thing, I had no idea what to do. So I basically stalked Chris on YouTube. I'll get to the end of this story here. Stalked Chris on YouTube for about six months before I pulled the trigger to become a client here. That was 2017, I believe to be exact. Fast forward now about four years. I've coached over 15,200 clients worldwide through online fitness. So yeah, so long story short, man, I had no business savviness whatsoever. I got some good training and just ultimately a lot of repetitions, whether it was selling through copy, selling through phone, through Zoom, high ticket, low ticket, group coaching, subscriptions, everything in between, supplements. Um, and I've just kind of been able to put together what works and what doesn't work. And so I hope today we can give you some value in terms of giving you some simple, practical applications for you. So you can do the three things that we all want. There is no denying everyone here watching this, including myself and Chris, want more things. Impact, we want to help people, which is why you're here. And that's why sales matters, because it's not really possible to help someone to the fullest capacity without them joining your program. Sales is the bridge between marketing and delivery of coaching. If you want to help people, you have to get good at sales. And if sales is a weird word for you to make you feel slimy and spammy and scammy, just replace the word sales with communication. Would you agree that in order to help people, you have to clearly communicate? Uh, number two, income. Money matters. Do you want to eat? Do you want to help the people around you? Do you want to, do you want to take care of your kids? Money does matter. Number three, um, and then can you do it on your terms? You want to be able to enjoy your lifestyle day to day. Or do you want to, I know Chris, we were talking about this, or do you want to get to 65, hopefully retire and then enjoy your life yet to die three years after you retire? So freedom, impact, income. We talk about that all the time. That's pretty much my story, Chris. Appreciate it. I love that you shared that. And I think a big thing that everyone needs to understand was uh, Josh has been able to go through so much and has been in so many positions that you might possibly have been right now as well. And when Josh and I chatted at our very first talk, which was a strategy session, which is simply a really easy way that we use to be able to figure out where are you, where do you need to go, what's the right plan for you to be able to do, that's exactly what we laid out. And one of the things Josh said on those strategy sessions is he needed to help with sales. And now fast forward, it's amazing to see that he has coached 15,200 people, but now he's actually being able to help you today be able to put together the right plan and know how to sell. So let's actually get into this because I want to share with you something that was a huge epiphany for me when it comes to being able to understand what really is selling? And we're not talking about selling sleazy style. I want you to be able to understand just like what Josh said is like communication at the end of the day is so important. Now I know on my screen, uh, Josh and I are taking up a little bit of real estate on this, but essentially what we're looking at is a seesaw. This is a fulcrum right now. I'm going to walk you through something a mentor showed with me that just absolutely blew my mind. And if you understand this concept and especially use what we're gonna be teaching you just after this, honestly, sales becomes so easy. So this is what I need you to think about right now. On the left-hand side of the fulcrum, what we have is your lead, okay? And on the right-hand side, what we have is you. Now, on the lead side of things, when it comes to the selling, the whole idea is we want to be able to make sure that your lead is going to say yes and sign onto your program. But there are two things that are stopping that lead from actually coming onto your program. And this is what we need to be able to overcome. And what the first thing is, is they have objections, okay? We know that they have objections that are going to be weighing them down from stopping them and getting onto your program. But the second thing that they have is they have skepticism. They are weighed down because they are skeptical about are you the right person to give them the solution that they're looking for? And you need to understand this. So we need to overcome objections and we need to overcome skepticism. Now, what you have to be able to get them on board is going to be one, what is your offer? What is it that you are actually offering them for them to be like, oh yes, that's exactly what I need. You are the solution that I'm looking for. And that is something that we need to have heavily weighted on your side so we can get them to say yes. But there's a second thing and that is going to be your selling ability. Now, 
mainly in the context of this conversation that we're having right now in this training, it's going to be your selling ability to be able to have the actual conversation. But there's more than that just as well. There is also how you get them into the conversation. So there's your sales funnel. There's the pipeline that you need to set up. There is the wording, communication, marketing that leads them up into whether they're actually going to have a very open, vulnerable, and coming into the sales conversation, very willing and open to come onto your program, or they're going to be coming on really cold, skeptical, and a little bit like, mm, I'm not too sure about this dude on the internet, and we need to be able to overcome that. So this is what we need to understand right now. Let's just say, for example, you're trying to sell a $20 program, right? $20 ebook, let's just say for right now. Now, their objections, and their skepticism for a $20 ebook, let's just say, it's pretty low. Would you agree, Josh? Like selling a $20 online fitness program, it's not much at all. No, absolutely. I'll go walk outside right now and knock on the condo next to me and sell them a $20 thing. Done. No problem. Do you know what I mean? Super easy. So, for example, your offer, what you're offering, what you're giving for a $20, okay? and your selling ability is pretty low. Doesn't need to be too much for you to be able to make a $20 sale. So we can happily say, we don't need to worry about that one. Let's scrap that. Now, let's say for example, you wanna sell a $200 program. So someone's objections and someone's skepticism to buy a $200 program is a little bit more. And so we need to be able to overcome that because in your offer, you're going to be giving them more value. You're going to be giving them more help. And your selling ability, well, to sell a $200 program, you could probably do that with a Facebook or an Instagram post. You could do that with maybe even a really simple sales page and you can be able to do a $200 program. Now, let's amp it up a bit. What about if you're selling a $2,000 program? Now, someone's objections for a $2,000 program, much heavier, much, much heavier. And someone's skepticism to say, well, am I willing to part with $2,000 for a fitness program? Well, that's gonna be much more skeptical. So that means your offer needs to be much more. You're giving them much more. This is when you're probably gonna be giving them a lot of, let's say, one-on-one -on -one coaching, a lot more of your time, a lot more of your expertise. You're really gonna be making sure you kind of start putting everything in to what you're able to actually sell. Your selling ability for a $2,000 program, some people could do that through a webinar. Now, some people, I know a lot of people that can't do it through a webinar, and I know some people can do it a lot easier, but typically, let's say for a $2,000 program, you might be doing it through a conversation, a Zoom call, maybe sitting down face-to-face -face with them to be able to go through something like that, okay? So, let's just amp it up one more time just to see how we go. Let's say you're selling a $20,000 program, okay? Your objections that you must overcome for a $20,000 program, for someone to part with 20 grand for you and what you have, their objections are gonna be much higher, much, much higher. Their skepticism, whether they're saying to themselves, am I going to give $20,000 of my hard earned cash to you for what it is to solve the problem that I have. Their skepticism is going to be through the roof and that's perfectly fine. So then that means your offer, dude, it's going to be big. And your selling ability must be absolutely amazing, let's be perfectly honest, to sell a $20,000 program. However, there is one thing that is absolutely game changing. This is what you need to understand. Let's have a difference between two different people. Let's say uh, on one hand, we have your local average CrossFit trainer, okay? Your CrossFit trainer is trying to sell a $20,000 CrossFit program, okay? His offer, he's throwing everything and the kitchen sink into his offer. He's giving more time than he probably has in his actual day to make sure he can sell a $20,000 program. And his selling ability must be sky high. He's got sales funnel, he's got webinars, he's got uh, video calls, he's got uh, actual sessions making sure, maybe multiple calls lined up to make sure and his selling ability has to be world-class to sell a $20,000 fitness program. So that's on one hand. On the other hand, let's say we've got Arnie. Let's say we've got Schwarzenegger on the other hand. What do you think Schwarzenegger needs to do to sell a $20,000 fitness program? Dude, he probably does one tweet and he can sell them out really, really easily. So what's the whole entire aspect of this and why am I wanting to share this with you? Because there's one thing that we change 
and that's the showing is if we move the phone to one side, it makes it much easier for the seesaw to roll to you. So if you are able to move the fulcrum to one side where you don't need to have the offer and selling ability that only God or Arnold can actually have, then you're gonna be able to sell your programs easier. Move it to the other side, well then it makes it really goddamn hard for you to be able to actually make that happen. So the idea is you need to be able to set everything up for you to be able to sell your programs so much easier. And that's what we're giving you today as well. This is why you need to understand it is just, uh, it's sorry, it's not just what we're giving you today that is the be all and end. You need to have the marketing in place. You need to have your delivery in place. You need to know how to scale. You need to know how to have all nine different engines inside of your business working so that this can work as well. Josh, does that actually make sense? Absolutely. I love that analogy and I've heard it, but it never gets old because it's the simple stuff and the fundamentals that we ultimately need to keep coming back to. So I love all that. Amazing, 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 amazing. Okay, dude, I wanna go into something that I think is really, really important. And this is like the nitty gritty of uh, sales right now. And that is gonna be pre-sales call routine. So right now I wanna cover three things together. Pre-sales call routine, value stacking, and actually how you close a call and handling objections as well. So Josh, pre-call routine, what is it that we need to be doing as fitness coaches to be able to sell these programs? Absolutely, and once again, Chris, when you and I come together, it's very practical implementations, things that people can do tomorrow in a situation. So just to make sure as accountability that you do what we just are going to tell you to do, to actually go do, um, Basil, last week, one of our members sold five clients at 1800 per client, a, the exact same number, Chris, that you gave in the example, five of them last week. He's a great dude. And if he's watching this right now, congrats on upgrading to the higher level program and the coaches cartel um, frameworks I used to get him into the higher level program, same ones that we're teaching you right now. Um, so very good stuff. Cal, our boy, Cal. 19 years old at the time, launched his coaching program in two days, sold 39 K worth of coaching. Love Cal, didn't have a whole lot of business and coaching experience before that happened. Okay, we had Kate Miller, who last week sent me a text message, and she said, Josh, by noon, 12 p.m. on last Friday, she sold 3.1K worth of coaching. <laughs> so good. There is a, so I'm just gonna keep going, Chris, because wait, there's more. <laughs> About two weeks ago, I had the greatest day of my sales career, right? And I told you five years ago where I was at, I sold 101K worth of coaching in one day. And what's so exciting about it is I feel like I'm just scratching the surface of what my potential is actually as a communicator and salesperson. But if you would like to kind of go from zero to selling over 100K worth of coaching in a day, and if you're a meathead like me, that should be reassuring. Back to why you should listen to all of that. Pre-sales call routine. I am so fascinated by the conversation we have with ourselves. Hmm. Before we can talk about any conversation you're going to have with any other human being, I refuse to talk about any of the strategy in regards to those conversations before we address what goes on in your head and in your body before you get on the call. Because I am interested, Chris, I'm interested in who these people are watching the video, who they are before they pick up the phone, before they flick on Zoom. So a couple things you guys can do to make sure you are showing up as the person you need to be as the most certain, positive, energetic version of yourself. This is stuff that I've done myself. And we actually just did a coaching session um, my weekly sales training this past week was on what do you do pre-call? Number one, something that helps me. It takes all the pressure off myself and I used to have a lot of anxiety around sales. One of the things that allowed me to shift my focus from kind of the whole scarcity to abundance thing was thinking about and actually visualizing how I'm going to help that person on the call. And if I have their social media or a name or email, I try to look them up. I stalk them a little bit before the call. So I envision their face. I envision their body. I envision them talking to me about their problems and pain points and what they need help with. And I envision myself giving them one or two pieces of advice that helps them have the light bulb moment. And then I think about what they're on the inside of the program and three weeks in when they lose seven pounds and have lost three inches on their waist. And they're telling me, oh my God, Josh, for the first time in my life, I'm sticking to my fitness goals because of what you're teaching me. I put myself in that state as if it's already happened. Mm. Not to be too woo-woo, I want to keep this practical, but I put myself in a position to where I am framing myself in a form of service because I'm thinking about them, I'm not thinking about me. 
because when I'm thinking a lot about me, I get selfish and I start thinking about, I need to perform on this call. What if they reject me? Mm -hmm. Dude, if you're thinking all that stuff before a sales call with love, I'm gonna call you out. You're being selfish. Stop thinking about yourself, think about them. So number one, real practical pre-call, envision yourself in service to that person. Number two, a less sexy thing, read the script. You should have a framework of some sort going into that call. Failing to prepare is preparing to fail. I love that cliche. It took me back to my sport days in terms of practicing for the big game. Dude, Chris, I was excited going into the big game because I knew I was prepared for the big game. When you're prepared for the big game, you're don't, you don't have the butterflies in your stomach. I'm nervous. I'm anxious. I don't know. Is, is this going to go well? What if everyone thinks I'm stupid? Dude, I can't wait to get to the big game because I'm ready because I'm prepared. And I'm ready because I'm prepared. So read the script. Don't just read the words because the script is usually not actually the secret sauce. You are the secret sauce once again. So don't just read the words, be very conscious of how you are saying those words. If you can read that script two or three times before you even get on the call, amazing. Because now it's second nature, back to my sport analogy, fitness and sports, it's the only way I sometimes make sense of life. So that's why I'm kind of teaching like this. So I hope everyone is connecting with this, Chris. Um, Dude, when you're in the game and you've practiced that same shot a bunch of times, now it's second nature. You're no longer thinking about what's going on. You can just kind of be, and it's more natural. So number one, service. Number two, go through the script. And then number three, another thing that I think is super practical, um, your psychology will always follow your physiology. Mm. So if you are all hunched over, sad, bad posture, what does that symbolize? It's almost like a, a baby of some sort in the fetal position, just helpless. Like, dude, if you if you really need to, if you're worried about self-expression, do this before your social media content as well, before you flick on the video, who are you before you start shooting the content? This is what I do. This builds the most important muscle in your body and it's not the one you think. This is called the not give a F muscle. I'll do this before a sales call. <laughs> I did it on purpose with 10 other coaches that I was teaching this to three days ago. They're like, Josh, you're crazy. I was like, dude, I'm feeling good though. I jumped around a little bit. I was like, man, you don't have to go crazy with it and do a full workout. But if you are too inside of your head, get into your body right before the call. And they're like, boom. I just, it's like I just did German volume training, 10 sets of 10 on leg press. I feel alive. So Chris, we could even go deeper on that, but those are three really great things people can do right away before the call. Dude, I absolutely love this. This is really good. And I think everything uh, like this is really encapsulated in is a quote that I think is just extremely important. And that really is, we don't rise to the level of our expectations, we fall to the level of our training. And that's exactly what we're going through right now. Are you actually having the things in place for you to day in, day out, be able to show up and to be able to train so that that is just going to be your normal as well? So dude, this is absolutely amazing. Second key thing, and this really comes into closing the call. And this is like, look, firstly, I remember so well being a personal trainer, especially face-to-face -face personal trainer for so long, the closing the sale, I just sucked at. I would like go into a cold sweat. And now it is something when you look at it the right way and you know how to do it properly, it becomes a breeze and you never have to worry about it again. So Josh, when it comes to value stacking and actually helping close the sale, what are the key things that we need to understand to make this happen? Yeah, just a few things that immediately come to mind and a couple of things that I remember, just the high volume of calls I've been on that has worked pretty well. Um, first of all, you have to be sold on what you're selling. And I know I'm, <laughs> I love that, this, this is the one take this show. Is this is good, <laughs> I need to hydrate. <laughs> Hydration nation, baby. I got my five million ounce water bottle right next to me as well, just unnecessarily big. Um, <laughs> completely not needed to have that, but it's all good. Um, so value stacking. First of all, you need to be sold on what you're selling. One of the ways you can become more sold on what you're selling is you actually becoming more familiar as to what the value of what you're selling actually is. I know this sounds almost silly, but after all the calls I have with coaches that don't fully have the sales and conversion rates that they want is because they don't ultimately truly know the value of what they're selling or they do, but on a surface level. So long story short, I'm going to add two parts to this, Chris, because I think there's two parts. Yeah. Um, 
Classic sales training, features, benefits. Most coaches will stop at the feature when they are explaining on the closing call what it is that they do. So here's what a feature is and here's what a benefit is. And I'll give you an example, really practical for you to walk away with and just fine, copy and paste my stuff. Just send me a Christmas card. Features. Those are the technical things you give people that helps them get the results they want. Features. I give you a workout plan so you can go train in the gym or at home. I give you a meal plan. Features. I give you a weekly check-in. I give you communication. Coach-client relationship, right? The benefits. People do not buy because of features. Hmm. They buy because of benefits. Benefits are the emotional attachment to what they get from the feature. Features are technical. Benefits are emotional. For the most part, people will buy because of benefits. Example. I give you a workout plan. That's what most coaches will say. And then they'll move on and say, I give you a meal plan. I give you a workout plan. And then that line right down the middle, Chris, you can just also insert so that. I give you a training plan so that you know exactly what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. So there's no guesswork for you. And if you know exactly what to do, when to do it, and how to do it, your motivation will be super high and you'll be able to stick with this, which allows you to get the results that you wanted so badly that you just have told me about for the last 15 minutes, lose 10 kilos, have more energy, attraction from spouse, all this information you would have already had by the time you get to this point in the call. So for just a couple practical things for everyone, features, write down all of the technical stuff you give people on, this, on the left-hand side of the screen. On the right-hand side of the screen, I would love for you to be able to write down two benefits, the emotional attachment they have to the features, for each feature. So two benefits per feature. And then guess what? That's basically your script for your closing call. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Chris, are you with me so far? That's yeah. the first part. Second part is the actual value stacking. How do we position you as the no brainer solution in terms of for this person when deciding, well, who do I work with? What does this look like? Am I going to make a commitment or not? Value stacking, super simple, but really effective. Once again, something Basil, he and I have talked about many, many times on my sales training, the dude that sold 9K worth of coaching. Maybe do what that guy did. For example, something it would go like this. So Chris, you could go pay a personal trainer to help you with the workout. So you'll go see them three or four times per week. So you can go get those workouts done. Maybe you're paying between 500 and a grand per month to work with that trainer. And you'll be able to see what I'm doing here when we loop it all full circle. And this goes directly into the close. You could go see a nutritionist to make you a meal plan because unfortunately you can't eat pizza every single day and have your dream body. I always use a little comedy in there. It's like with the personal trainer one. Hey, unfortunately we can't all sit on the couch and get to 5% body fat or whatever goal they have. So you could go pay, you know, a nutritionist to some extent, another couple hundred bucks per month. We could put whatever number we want on that. Probably a little bit cheaper than the PT. Yeah, three to 500 maybe we could call it. And then to make sure you're showing up as the person you need to, because you're telling me motivation is really important to you and the mindset and lifestyle side of things, you could go see some form of a counselor or like a life coach um, a couple times per week to make sure you're in a good place mentally. So there's another couple hundred bucks per month. So guess what? And like, all right, so we're going in and out of the role play here. But this is really good, I think. Um, you are now positioning this option as something that's really valuable. But guess what? When we do the math, it's pretty damn expensive. So if you're having multiple professions, this is also what's happening. And I'm purposefully doing this is a very expensive solution. This is a very time consuming solution because if you have the three or four professionals we just listed right here and you've got to go see each of them, the personal trainer three to five times per week, the nutritionist once or twice per week, the life coach once or twice per week, emailing and texting back and forth with all those different coaches, very time consuming. You've basically just added yourself a part-time job. Yeah. And then number three, a huge problem is a lack of cohesion between the advice you're getting from those three different conflicting sources of information. Is that good or bad for the prospect? Is that creating more clarity or confusion for the prospect? Right? So you've basically built up this option A scenario that's expensive, time consuming, and lacks integrity. Because in, integrate, uh, into, uh, integer, the whole number, Right? It means to be whole and full. You cannot be whole and full, like number one, number two, number three, with all this fractioning going on.
So you've essentially purposefully set it up in such a way. And comment down below if you're getting this, because I can't see the comments, but Chris can. Let me know if this is making sense. So you position it like this. This is called common enemy. A common enemy is a thought, a person, an idea, or a group of people that basically allows you to put yourself and the prospect that you're talking to on the same side of the table. Because a lot of times in sales, it's usually lead and the salesperson butting heads and doing this. I never put myself in this situation because of what I do with value stacking is I put us on the same side of the table and I'm creating an, a common enemy for us to fight against. Mm -hmm. So that's expensive, time consuming, conflicting. We've, I beat the dead horse on that. You've positioned it as the common enemy of that's the team that you don't want to be on. Those are the bad guys. Overcharging, under delivering in value, conflicting advice from the professionals, another part time job with all the meetings you got to go to. Or guess what option B is going to be? Chris, I'm the personal trainer in a pocket giving you everything under the sun from the day to day, week to week, month to month support that you need so you can stay motivated as well as the weekly check-ins to make sure you're doing what it is that you have to do, giving you the training plan so you know exactly how to train, what to train and when to train it and the meal plan so you can enjoy your favorite foods in moderation while still getting great results for a fraction of the price. So good. And you're getting all of this coming from one coherent source of information and there's the information. You drop me a 13 second message I drop you a message back, nice and easy for both of us. So now, option B, these are the good guys, charging a more reasonable price point. When they look at the difference between the math we just went through, 1800 bucks a month versus you charging 300 a month, you are cheaper, you're faster, you're more efficient, and you're more, co more coherent, which means you have more integrity. Mm, delicious. So sometimes you could close it a couple different ways. So after you go through option A and option B, if you set it up like that. Name, do you think option A or option B is the more logical next step? What is more logical? Of course, the cheaper, faster, easier solution. Mm -hmm. So another way you could close it, you could go straight into what you actually charge. So it's 300 a month for six months, or um, you give a slight discount for them to pay up front. Then you go, all right, can we get you started today with either the upfront option or the month to month option? All right, so you can kind of close it down. I like asking them, or, or you could even do the super open-ended one that you got to follow up with. Name, where do you want to go from here? So good. So all of those, you got to find your flavor with it, but those are a couple ways you could take that conversation all leading to the same path of give me your credit card details. Dude, this is super valuable. I'm so happy we're doing this. Like this is this is so much better than so many other people's paid stuff. I've got to be perfectly honest, you know what I mean? And we're just like <laughs> wanting to freely give this out so this can be done. This is so good, so good, so good. Uh, let me do, let me get back to my iPad. There's one thing I really want us to be able to cover right now, objections. Now, uh, what we wanted to share with you actually with here is this is actually one of the uh, training sheets that we use inside of the cartel for members to be able to go through. So they will literally have this document out in front of them when doing sales calls so they can actually help right now. Now, obviously some big objections. Let's go through one of them, but obviously some common objections everyone's gonna be going through is I don't have money. Uh, I have to think about it. And then there can even be things like, I have to talk with my partner. I don't know if it will work for me, which is really, they have a lack of trust. They don't trust you that this is going to solve their problems. So you can see here, these are the major objections right now. Let's just go to the top one because I know a lot of people are gonna be sucking with this, which is really saying, I don't have the money. Josh, when this objection comes up, uh, what is the secret source to make sure that you can peer straight through it and actually solve the objection so that the person sees that what the value is of what you're selling is not a problem for them to be able to actually spend the money on? Sure, absolutely. This is obviously a very important one. You'll continue to get this objection for the rest of your career, by the way. So you better figure out how to handle it. Um, and one of the reasons why I like doing what I do in terms of teaching sales is I like doing some black belt ninja type stuff to where I'm kind of taking away people's objections before they give them to me. And one of the reasons why you might be getting the I don't have the money thing right now is because you're not doing something like the value stacking. So the number one way, Chris, for most people to handle objections is to not necessarily try to avoid getting them, but to set up the close in such a way to where they won't run into that problem. So value stacking, how is someone going to say after going from 
option A, eighteen hundred bucks a month, to option B, three hundred dollars per month. How are they going to say that's too much money? You're caught. You're saving them so much money. It's like, is this charity work? Like they should be thanking you. So yeah. first of all, I want to give that disclaimer. Second thing, though. So actually, Josh, can I, I think just jump in for two seconds because this course. is really important. Yeah. Um, you're dishing absolute gold. What Josh just said here, and this is what I want to make sure you pick up from what he's putting down, is a lot of objection handling is actually doing things before the objection can actually come up. So he's actually solving objections before they actually come up. So that goes beyond today's training, but this is something I think is really important because when you have all this lined up, even in your marketing material, you will actually limit or even possibly stop these objections coming up as well. But if you do have someone turn around onto a call and say, ah, oh, dude, this is too much money. Josh, keep going, brother. This is great. Absolutely. And maybe we do it. How do we pre-qualify our leads so that we're only having, for the most part, high quality conversations? Maybe that's a future training we should do because I know we get that question all the time as well. Um, money. few things you can go to here. I use inside our little script here. I use my own personal story of when I hired a coach. And I, first of all, it's kind of that fun little sales thing of you acknowledge what they say. So I totally understand that money can be tight, especially times right now. First thing you say. You do not be like, pardon my French, but the typical like sales douchebag of completely ignoring what they just said, mm -hmm. something that they're very, for the most part, insecure about, and you just go to you trying to handle the objection. Acknowledge what they said and fully acknowledge it. Mm -hmm. It's what the women in my life have told me I don't do enough of. <laughs> <laughs> Second, acknowledge, appreciate. Hey, dude, I understand and I actually really appreciate it right now. I, hey, this whole Corona thing is honestly pretty crazy. There's been some uncertainty for me as well. So I, I truly appreciate what you just told me. If you do those two things, do you think that person will be more open or more closed off than they were 30 seconds ago? Yep. Which is very important with the objection. Because also the way you say the words is super important. So with what you just say, with acknowledge and appreciate and the way you say it, very, very powerful because if you can't get that down, they're not even going to be willing to hear out what you say. Mm -hmm. I give my example here after you do that of what it was like for me to invest in a coach. It was scary. It was uncertain. I kind of knew it would work, but I didn't have a guarantee. Yep. But then I transitioned into what I would say is the cost of not taking action. This is worth millions of dollars in your coaching career. And I hope you take what I say right now seriously. The, think about it logically. Forget the sale, forget the objection, forget the persuasion and all this stuff. What's the cost of someone dying 10 to 20 years earlier than they should have because they weren't healthy? What's the cost of not looking, feeling and operating the way you want to? What's the cost of not having attraction from your spouse for the second half of your life? What's it costing you as a business person, if you're a business person, where you're tired halfway through the day and you're a salesperson and you can't bring energy like Uncle Josh at 7.15 p.m. after he got up at 6 a.m. and ran calls since 6.30 a.m. It's costing you money to not be performing at a high level. Right. So you're kind of saying that, but you're trying to say it in a more empathetic way than the very blunt way I just said. So I would take people through, Chris. Hey, you're thinking about the cost of joining us. Can we acknowledge the cost of not joining us? And by the time you get to this point in the call, you would have already known what their kind of pain points and problems are. Like, hey, you told me you want to be able to roll around on the ground and play with your grandkids. The cost of you not joining us is maybe you not being able to do that or you not being able to do that for as long as you would like. Mm. So then we loop back around to, hey, I'm giving you the, the support, the tools and the strategy along the way so then you don't have to experience that. But I want to help you. Hey, like the mess alone of not being healthy long term it's going to cost you hundreds of thousands of dollars over the next three decades, or it's going to cost you $300 today. Like, seriously, what do we have here to talk about regarding money? And I told you, I appreciate what you told me regarding money because I've been stressed out about money as well. But can you really, Chris, can you really afford not to do this? So, good. so you kind of work out that. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And that's the beauty of it is like, what you're doing here, you're acknowledging them, you're really meaning them to where they are, and you're also bringing out the real problem as to why they have that objection, and you're simply just being able to answer the questions that they have and bring out better questions as well, and then just doing that. So I think that's really, really key and critical. So important for people to be able to understand that. And also, the simplicity behind it. Do you know what I mean? Like, everything you just said, 
actually comes from a loving place. And this is where I had a sales trainer years ago teach me something that really changed me. And sales is about two things. One, do you love yourself enough to charge what you're worth? Say the things that you need to be able to say, because if you actually think you can help this person, then it is your duty to actually do what you need to do to be able to help that person and get them on board. But then uh, the second half of the love is, do you love that person on the other side? Which is, do you have the ability to ask them the real questions because they've come to you in pain. They're looking for a solution to a problem and they need to be able to, at times, see that they need to be able to actually take a step forward to solve that problem, which can be scary because that is why they're in that place in the first place. Anyway, so dude, this has been so good. I love this because we thought that this training was only gonna be like 10, 15 minutes long, and it's been like over 40 minutes or something like that. So this has just been incredible, Josh, and it's so good. Um, and I want to be able to say, obviously, if you're with us this far, that thank you. You're obviously very serious about it, about making sure that you truly grow the business that you really want to as well. And from here, it's understanding, one, do you have these things in place? Do you know that you can rock up to these conversations and be able to actually sell clients into your programs? Do all of the nine engines making sure that your business is working coherently because it's not about just one problem. This is where so many coaches come to us with what I call a Swiss cheese problem. They've got holes and we just need to plug them. And the easiest way to plug them, the easiest way to know what it is that you need to do is what exactly what Josh started with as well. And that is what is called a strategy session. So really quickly and easily, you can have a chat with Josh. You can have a chat with the team. You can make sure that we do three simple things because for you to have the plan for what you need to be able to do to get to the business that you want, one, we've got to figure out where are you. Two, we've got to figure out what do you want to achieve? What does success look like to you? And then three, what's the straightest line for you to actually achieve that at the end of the day as well? And I know a lot of the time when you say strategy session, and Josh, you probably thought this as well before you had one with me as well, is, oh shit, do you mean what's it gonna, the call is absolutely free because it's the easiest way for us to know, can we actually help you? So we wanna actually be able to help you first. So worst case scenario, you take the plan that we give you and you run with it. Best case scenario, we can actually help you implement it as well. And there's nothing to buy actually on this first call because we wanna make sure if we can actually help you as well, because otherwise there's no point in actually having any conversation whatsoever as well. So we wanna make sure that we can actually help you and hopefully today has helped you as well. So Josh, what do you think about the kind of like the most uh, common mistakes someone makes when coming into a strategy session and why they really need to have one? Yes. Oh my God. I, so forget me talking about everyone else in terms of the hundreds of calls that I've done like this. Let's just go back to me in 2016, 2017. Once again, I know you and I keep talking about this. Hard to talk about that guy. I don't have a whole lot in common with that dude. Um, the complete lack of clarity as to what I wanted created so much friction for me. Most coaches and entrepreneurs will get into a car analogy time and have no idea where they want to go. So they end up driving around mindlessly or they think about all the different routes they could take leading them to nowhere. And they spend so much time thinking about that. They just sit in the car and don't go anywhere. I've done both of those. I drove around mindlessly and I was like, I'm, I don't even know what's going on here. So I'm just going to sit in the car and do nothing. Mm. So if coaches don't know what they want, hard to help. Number two, coaches don't have numbers attached to what they want. What gets measured gets improved. I love that cliche that you've brainwashed me with over the last five years. <laughs> what gets measured gets improved. If you can come onto the strategy session with some numbers attached to it, that'd be awesome. And number three, if you can really be honest with yourself about what's missing from what you're currently doing, that helps me help you so much. Mm. So it ultimately comes down to you having an honest conversation about where you're at, where you're going and what you need help with. If you can really like pull back the onion on that and be super honest with yourself as much as you can, it allows me to actually help you on that first call. Otherwise, we're going to start out with a surface level conversation. I'm going to hold you accountable and force you to peel back deeper because otherwise it's a waste of my time. Um, and then you're just going to be super confused. So if you can actually come into the call prepared with as much info as you can, I'll guide you through it. But come onto that call prepared about where you're at, where you want to go, what you need help with. Super simple. 
Amazing. Dude, this has been incredible. I really, really appreciate this. I, uh, Josh, you've dropped plenty of gold. I think this has been a super valuable trading. I think the biggest no-brainer next step is to, to click the link below, make sure that you actually book in a strategy session. Then we can go from there, making sure we can actually outline the exact plan. And it's always been fun to jam with you, Josh. So thank you so much, dude, for you being you. Uh, because to be perfectly honest, do you know what I mean? So many years ago when we first chatted, uh, you were a very different dude, do you know what I mean? And for you to have grown just so much and to be able to achieve so much in such a short period of time, honestly, it's been a blessing for me to be able to watch. So I really appreciate it. So thank you, dude. It's really been unbelievable. The whole experience has been amazing. We love you guys. We are so appreciative and so blessed that we found you. And we're just excited. We're so excited for the things to come. Honestly, joining the Coaches Cartel has been the best decision I ever made in my career. Hands down. They gave me the right mentorship and information that I was thirsting for. What was super, super cool was just getting to know Chris the guy, Chris the dad, Chris the business owner, um, chats over coffees. Uh, and that's when I think you really realize that, that hey, um, this is the real deal and this is the place to be. This is gonna have an impact on your life, your relationships, you're gonna earn a stack load more money and you're gonna have a bigger impact on the world. Chris is amazing at what he does. I mean, he will give you that, that system, that process, even to the point where he will give you the messaging or a template that puts out, has a, such a quick response for people, gets people back into your business having a conversation and I just found the biggest thing was the guidance around some of these little steps. Now I get to work from home, support my wife, and actually do the work that I love because I'm helping other people and impacting their lives whilst having the freedom to be able to live life on my terms. If you've been struggling for a long time to get the results you've been looking for, then it's time to put your ego down and hire a coach and let him take you through the proven process. And Chris is the man to do that. I was a bit skeptical about it at the start. I'm so happy I did. I have times five my weekly income because I am able to now work only eight hours, but more efficiently and more effectively. You have to think about your future here. If you're feeling a little bit skeptical about it, just think to yourself, why not have financial freedom now? I wish I did it sooner, trust me. Do it and you will not regret it.